The geoid is the shape that the surface of the oceans would take under the influence of Earth's gravitation and rotation alone. In the absence of other influences such as winds and tides, this surface is extended through the continents. All points on the geoid have the same gravity potential energy. Specifically, the geoid is the equipotential surface that would coincide with the mean ocean surface of the Earth if the oceans and atmosphere were in equilibrium, at rest relative to the rotating Earth, and extended through the continents. According to Gauss, who first described it, it is the mathematical figure of the Earth a smooth but highly irregular surface whose shape results from the uneven distribution of mass within and on the surface of the Earth. It does not correspond to the actual surface of the Earth's crust, but to a surface which can only be known through extensive gravitational measurements and calculations. Despite being an important concept for almost 200 years in the history of geodesy and geophysics, it has only been defined to high precision in recent decades. It is often described as the true physical figure of the Earth, in contrast to the idealized geometrical figure of a reference ellipsoid. The surface of the geoid is higher than the reference ellipsoid wherever there is a positive gravity anomaly and lower than the reference ellipsoid wherever there is a negative gravity anomaly. Description the geoid surface is irregular, unlike the reference ellipsoid which is a mathematical idealized representation of the physical Earth, but considerably smoother than Earth's physical surface. Although the physical Earth has excursions of plus 8,848 meters and minus 429 meters, the geoid's variation ranges from minus 106 to plus 85 meters less than 200 meters total compared to a perfect mathematical ellipsoid. If the ocean surface were isopecnic and undisturbed by tides, currents, or weather, it would closely approximate the geoid. The permanent deviation between the geoid and mean sea level is called ocean surface topography. If the continental land masses were crisscrossed by a series of tunnels or canals, the sea level in these canals would also very nearly coincide with the geoid. In reality the geoid does not have a physical meaning under the continents, but geodesists are able to derive the heights of continental points above this imaginary, yet physically defined, surface by a technique called spirit leveling. Being an equipotential surface, the geoid is by definition a surface to which the force of gravity is everywhere perpendicular. This means that when traveling by ship, one does not notice the undulations of the geoid. The local vertical is always perpendicular to the geoid and the local horizon tangential to it. Likewise, spirit levels will always be parallel to the geoid. Note that a GPS receiver on a ship may, during the course of a long voyage, indicate height variations. Even though the ship will always be at sea level, this is because GPS satellites, orbiting about the center of gravity of the Earth, can only measure heights relative to a geocentric reference ellipsoid. To obtain one's geoidal height, a raw GPS reading must be corrected. Conversely, height determined by spirit leveling from a tidal measurement station, as in traditional land surveying, will always be geoidal height. Modern GPS receivers have a grid implemented inside where they obtain the geoid height over the world geodetic system ellipsoid from the current position. Then they are able to correct the height above WGS ellipsoid to the height above WGS 84 geoid. In that case when the height is not zero on a ship it is due to various other factors such as ocean tides, atmospheric pressure and local sea surface topography. Simplified example. The gravitational field of the Earth is neither perfect nor uniform. A flattened ellipsoid is typically used as the idealized Earth, but even if the Earth were perfectly spherical, the strength of gravity would not be the same everywhere, because density varies throughout the planet. 
This is due to magma distributions, mountain ranges, deep sea trenches, and so on. If that perfect sphere were then covered in water, the water would not be the same height everywhere. Instead, the water level would be higher or lower depending on the particular strength of gravity in that location. Spherical harmonics representation Spherical harmonics are often used to approximate the shape of the geoid. The current best such set of spherical harmonic coefficients is EGM-96, determined in an international collaborative project led by NEMA. The mathematical description of the non-rotating part of the potential function in this model is, where in a geocentric latitude and longitude respectively, are the fully normalized associated legendary polynomials of degree and order and under the numerical coefficients of the model based on measured data. Note that the above equation describes the Earth's gravitational potential, not the geoid itself. At location the coordinate being the geocentric radius, i.e., distance from the Earth's center. The geoid is a particular equipotential surface, and is somewhat involved to compute. The gradient of this potential also provides a model of the gravitational acceleration. EGM-96 contains a full set of coefficients to degree and order 360, describing details in the global geoid as small as 55 km. The number of coefficients, and, can be determined by first observing in the equation for v that for a specific value of n there are two coefficients for every value of m except for m equals zero. There is only one coefficient when m equals zero since there are thus coefficients for every value of n. Using these facts and the formula, it follows that the total number of coefficients is given by using the EGM-96 value of, for many applications the complete series is unnecessarily complex and is truncated after a few terms. New even higher resolution models are currently under development. For example, many of the authors of EGM-96 are working on an updated model that should incorporate much of the new satellite gravity data, and should support up to degree and order 2160. NAR has announced the availability of EGM-2008, complete a spherical harmonic degree and order 2159, and contains additional coefficients extending to degree 2190 and order 2159. Software and data is on the Earth Gravitational Model 2008 WGS-84 version, page, precise geoid. The 1990s saw important discoveries in the theory of geoid computation. The precise geoid solution by Vanacek and co-workers improved on the Stokesian approach to geoid computation. Their solution enables millimeter to centimeter accuracy in geoid computation, an order of magnitude improvement from previous classical solutions, causes for geoid anomalies. Variations in the height of the geoidal surface are related to density anomalous distributions within the Earth. Geoid measures help thus to understand the internal structure of the planet. Synthetic calculations show that the geoidal signature of a thickened crust is positive, opposite to what should be expected if the thickening affects the entire lithosphere. Time variability Recent satellite missions, such as GOC and GRACE, have enabled the study of time-variable geoid signals. The first products based on GOC satellite data became available online in June 2010. Through the European Space Agency, S Earth Observation User Services Tools, ESA launched the satellite in March 2009 on a mission to map Earth gravity with unprecedented accuracy and spatial resolution. On 31 March 2011, the new geoid model was unveiled at the 4th International GOC User Workshop hosted at the Technische Universität München in Munich, Germany. Studies using the time variable geoid computed from GRACE data have provided information on global hydrologic cycles, mass balances of ice sheets, and post-glacial rebound. 
From post-glacial rebound measurements, time-variable grace data can be used to deduce the viscosity of Earth's mantle. Celestial bodies The concept of the geoid has been extended to other planets and also moons, as well as asteroids.